Well, hello and welcome. Now, today's topic is quite interesting. Please, sir, can I broadcast? Yes, please, sir, can I broadcast? Well, the National Media Commission uh, is coming out with a uh, legal NLI uh, 2224, which uh, basically is saying that anybody who's going to broadcast anything either through uh, TV, radio, or any electronic means or magnetic means, you need to uh, seek approval with regards to what content you want to broadcast. They approve it before you broadcast. Then everybody is saying, hold on, are we going to the criminal libel days where, you know, government has a strong hold on what goes out? You know, the Nikolai Chaichevsku days where, you know, you actually have to cut the head and find the head of when he was in Form 5 and put it on so that he permanently looks young. That's to the extreme, but that's not what I'm talking about. But in all fairness, if we look at the education standards we have here, the amount of uh, people who are quote-unquote illiterate, who depend on radio and TV broadcast, and we look at some of the gymnastics where some preachers you know, do on TV and radio constantly professing that they were in bed with God. Should somebody you know, sit somewhere and say, no, enough is enough, you can't do this, or we are a free country, we have come a long way from the radio eye and let it go. The people receiving the information will determine what is right and what is wrong. This is a very tricky one, but it has to be debated because uh, there's a fine line to restricting the media and educating the masses. Where do we stand and where do you stand? And that's what we're going to discuss this evening. It feels like a discussion that would go beyond today. And all the uh, topics this year have been big and are going to continue. My name is Anand Sakwa. This is PM Express. When I come back, I'm talking to Samson Ladi Ayenini, a uh, renowned lawyer. Uh, my, my, you know, I have a special place for Samson, so he knows that. <laughs> and then I have George Sapon. Uh, long lost but found, uh, Executive Secretary of the National Media Commission. And we are going to discuss this thing to find out what do we do? Do we fill out a form and say that, look, every Thursday, Nana Sakwa is going to do that, my opinion. And uh, well, he'll basically speak his mind depending on what side of the bed he came from. Will they approve of something like that? Don't move, we're coming back. Please, sir, uh, can I broadcast? Quite literally. Uh, you would uh, come up with your radio station, you come up with a name, you would fill up a form to say, I want to set up a radio station called uh, uh, Joy 99.7 FM. Uh, we are going to be doing a morning show in the morning and uh, we'll be talking about the newspapers, headlines, and maybe take a national topic to do. After that, I'll run for four hours. After that, uh, uh, there will be cosmopolitan mix and they'll be playing music from you know, a cross section of the society. And then after that, there will be the news. After the news, Otabu will come and give a you know, word or two. Cosmopolitan will continue. And then depending on which day. Now, if it's a Thursday, that's a tricky bit. If it's a Thursday at 2 o'clock. Now, there's this chief uh, who doesn't live in the village. He's, he's in the city. Now, depending on which side of the bed he wakes up, he comes up with his opinion. In fact, the, the topic of the show is called, that's my opinion. And it could be on any subject. It could be religion, politics, social, marriage, anything at all. He gives his opinion and goes away. And la di da di da di da And the National Media Commission has to say, okay, we have approved of it. Or no, 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 no. As for these opinions, we can't approve of it because we don't know which side of the bed he's going to wake up. And this is tricky, but... This now is law. But before I introduce my guest again, let me just, you know, highlight some of the uh, things. This is requirement for content authorization. Uh, an operator shall not convey or permit to be carried content on a public electronic communication network, a public electronic communication service or broadcasting service without obtaining a content authorization from the commission. Two, an operator who contravenes sub-regulation one commits an offence and is liable on summary uh, conviction to a fine of not less than 5,000 penalty points and not more than 50,000 penalty uh, units 
or to a term of imprisonment not less than two years or not more than five years or both uh, the fine and the term of imprisonment. Let me go to page four. I circled something there which was quite uh, interesting. Uh, it says, uh, where the commission considers that the program guide is unsatisfactory, the commission shall notify the applicant in writing. Uh, where the commission considers the uh, program guide as unsatisfactory, the commission shall notify the applicant in writing and shall state in the notice to what extent the program guide uh, must be revised to meet the requirement of the commission. It goes further on, and then if we look at nine, it says an approved program guide is valid for 12 months. But then if it goes on further, there's one here that says the content authorization is valid from the date it was guaranteed for a period of three years. They are a bit more technical, but we're just going to start from the beginning. What is this all about? Are we you know, being regulated or we are not? Directly next to me is uh, Mr. George Sapon, Executive Secretary, National Media Commission, and further away is uh, Samson Ladi, a private legal practitioner in house, our own. This is yeah, yeah, yeah. our own. We are claiming every, every glory he gets, we are claiming so. <laughs> Gentlemen, you're welcome. Thank you Thank very you. much, Bye -bye. Nana. Uh, since you brought this law, what, what, what do you hope to achieve? Because it, it, it looks as if uh, from where I sit, what, what is missing now is uh, enforcement rather than more regulation. Because it seems as if everything is there already, but we don't yeah. arrest the people who defaulted, and then we are adding more laws. Okay. Thank you very much, Nana. And I think that since this is my first time on the show, since the big day, <laughs> congratulations in, is in order for highlighting our culture so greatly. Uh, at your wedding. Thank you. And uh, I, I think we've had Both some... Both people were invited in the uh, Can you imagine? I, 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 I coincidentally, to I got them all today. In the Can you village. imagine? <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine? But thank you so much, <laughs> Dan. Um, I, I, I think that we need to, to, to understand those law. We need to get to the beginning. Everywhere in the world, because of the peculiar nature of broadcasting, broadcasting is regulated. And there are two elements in broadcasting regulation. I've explained this a bit today. Every broadcasting regulation, whether it is in a license or it's in a law, contains two elements. Standards, technical standards, which lays out whether you are broadcasting on FM or today we don't do much of AM or SW, or if you are doing television, in which band you are doing that. And then there are content obligations on the broadcaster or the network operator that he must meet, mm -hmm. principally not to carry hate speech or to incite people to destroy the nation and all. In some countries, both elements are run by the same agency. We call them converged regulators. So in the, in the United Kingdom, in the USA, in South Africa, you have organizations like that. Mm -hmm. In some other countries, there are different agencies regulating technical standards and others regulating content standards. Okay. In Ghana, we have we do not have a converged regulator. So we have the National Communications Authority in charge of technical standards and the National Media Commission in charge of content issues. Over the years, NCA has always licensed on technical issues. So the license that almost every broadcaster now has is solely to enable them to use the spectrum, but not on content. So what this law does is to provide some minimum standards to complement the technical standards that exist in the NCA law, in the Electronic Communications Act, and the Electronic Communications Regulations. So essentially, this law is not about journalists or about editors or about any such person. It only says that Anybody who sets up a network in order for public electronic communication must respond to certain minimum standards. And this is international best practice. So essentially, that is all this law is asking for. Nothing more, nothing complicated. Now, now you at home, if you want to contribute, it's 0560 uh, 
0560 800 Send your messages in and then I will catch up with you. Something. We can't complain about that. Best practices worldwide. Uh, I'm not familiar of the specific best practice that he's referring to um, as far as content regulation is concerned. What I'm familiar with is that the concerns that he has or the concerns that the NMC has and the NMC by the provisions of the constitution is placed in a very important you know sit position in 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 the scheme of things mm -hmm. in the administration of this country um, and particularly in respect of the media and its work more particularly it is supposed to ensure and promote media independence and freedom so it will be it will be very strange to have that same entity seeking to take away that independence and the freedoms that it is empowered by the constitution to ensure and promote i believe it is the reason there's a hue and cry about this particular law and i have told mr george sapong um, that if you have a law for which you require a lot of explaining for members of society who are reading that law to come to grips with that law then there's a problem with it so first off i see very clearly that the mischief that they seek to cure questions of obscenity questions of uh, public morality public health which of course the constitution in article 164 says that all the the rights that we have been granted as media are supposed to be exercised subject to laws that are reasonable for the uh, for national security for protection of public morals and for the protection of the of the rights and reputations of other individuals now my question to answer in that regard is that are there laws in this country that cater for that segment that the constitution envisages my answer is yes an emphatic yes in fact if you take a quick glance at part four of the criminal and other offenses act it makes provision for these areas so that the persons who who outreach the persons who go beyond the requirement of the law as far as questions of public morality and health as far as questions of obscenity are concerned are punished criminally under the laws of this country but not the media entity that has the fundamental right provided in article 24 under the bill of rights there is the freedom of expression the freedom of speech and the constitution says that freedom includes media freedom the mass media and i end up on a note that if you look at chapter 12 which begins with article 162 it is very clear that the nmc particularly if you read closely article 167 the NMC has acted ultra-various its powers. It has exceeded the powers granted it by law. And the Constitution says, if any laws are made which are found to be inconsistent with the provisions of the Constitution, those laws are null and void. They have no effect and ought to be struck down when the, court, the Supreme Court's attention is brought to them. So my argument is simply that again if you read article 162 clause 2 it says there shall not be censorship in ghana no censorship now if you read this li nana from 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 regulation one to the end you will find that the the national media commission in the end cumulatively will become a lawmaker, the enforcer of that law, that is the police, and will become the court unto itself, or the judge in the matter. When we get into the details, 
I will get to explain some of these issues. And I think also additionally that there is a certain, you know, pecuniary benefits, financial benefits that I discern the NMC stands to gain if this law comes into effect. Hmm. Uh, 167, you're going beyond your regulation. How do you respond? Their powers. But, yeah, that is, that beyond is, your powers. That is, that is slightly not accurate. I think the provision... Only some, slightly. Uh, uh, well, when you are talking to your brother, <laughs> See, you want to be very careful carefully. the <laughs> language in which you express <laughs> disagreement. Something there, if you look at 167, it appears, it appears to me 167D is the one that you are particularly e in or no D? E. D, okay, yeah. One six seven D is not particularly can we it's not particularly to, to make regulations by constitutional that, that's not D. Is that D? Yes, that's it. it. That's it. Read yeah. it. That's okay. It. To make uh, to that, make to me. make regulations mm -hmm. by constitutional instrument for <sighs> the re uh, registration of newspapers and other publications, except that the regulation mm -hmm. shall not provide for the excess of any direction exercise. or control exercise yeah. of any direction or control over the professional function of a person engaged in the production of newspapers or other means of mass communications and if i go further to perform such no, that's it so okay. the emphasis that's is emphasis. that they can make regulations mm -hmm. but, but it should those regulations true. shall not include a power okay mm -hmm. a power to exercise direction and okay. control over your functions as a journalist okay. or the operator, so okay. to speak. Two quick things. First of all, uh, where something gets it wrong mm -hmm. is that the authority for the ZLI is not derived from 167D. It derives from Section 241B of the NMC Act. And that provision says that the commission may, subject to the provisions of this act, by legislative instrument, prescribe any other matter that may be necessary for the efficient discharge of its functions under this act. So you are referring so to that's an a inferior broad authority. Yeah. Well, I am referring you to a higher no. authority. I don't want to go no, by please, the act. No, no, take Because the time. act is inferior. The constitution is superior to the act. I'm sorry, that's not... <laughs> the way to go. No, the provision, no, please, no, no, the the, the, to there's no, there's no uh, doubt about uh, that. Article 11 of the Constitution. The, the provision that he read mm. relates specifically to the making of regulations for newspaper registration. So you cannot apply that to the issue in issue because this one has nothing to do with newspaper registration. This one has nothing to do with newspapers at we all. We have the letter of the so, law and the spirit no, no, of the law. Well, I do not know which spirit you are talking <laughs> That's about the now. In it there. can't be. Mm. Now, now let's take the provision again mm. so that our listeners and viewers can follow us. Okay. What that provision says is that the commission, one of the com uh, functions of the commission is to make regulations by constitutional instrument for the registration of newspapers and other publications. And then in making the instrument for newspaper and other publications registration, it adds that the regulations are not provide for. In other words, the regulations for newspaper registration or the regulations for other publications should not include any exercise of any direction or control over the professional functions of a person engaged in the production of newspapers or other means of mass communication. So this provision is very specific to the making of regulations for newspaper registration. Mass so it is not. Is there? Is there? Mass I, I do not. I sometimes I think that no, we owe it. No, <laughs> but we owe it to okay, as that's lawyers. Fine, that's fine, that's we fair. owe it to right. non-lawyers. Mm to understand okay, that okay. there are rules of interpretation. Mm -hmm. One of the most well, basic well, rules... Mass communication fall under what we, we're doing No, we want radio. to be very careful to take our time to explain. Mm -hmm. There's a basic principle of interpretation that we call the a use them generous rule, which says that any time you have a set of words that are related, that are clear and specific, any general word that follows them must be interpreted in the nature of the specific words used. 
So when the law speaks of newspapers and publications, it is important and it is talking about press and editors and matters like that. It is very clear to any lawyer that this provision is dealing with newspapers. It has nothing to do with electronic communication that this law is dealing with. Well, well, so the, the mm -hmm. most the important law is what I have cited to you, which is section 24.1. Unless respect, this law do you offends the constitution. Right. So to say that this, not, that this is improper, mm. you should be able to show something in the constitution that this law offends. Mm. And that is even left to the court to decide. Now, okay. now you understand. Mm. So until a court strikes us this provision as being inconsistent with the constitution and to that effect null and void, this law stands. And it is on the basis of this provision that this ally was made. So any citation that relates this instrument to Article 167D is certainly not sustainable. I beg to differ with the greatest of respect. You see, Nana, I state again that there is a letter of the law and the spirit of the law. Yeah. Why do you think that in our, in our collective wisdom as a country, we will promulgate a constitution? And a constitution is not supposed to capture every facet of our lives. Mm -hmm. It captures the broad strokes, which guides us into providing the basic details and the mechanisms for the mechanics for whatever we have to do. Why do you think that it will prohibit, it will prohibit exercise and con of direction and control over newspaper and other publications, mass communication? And that will be interpreted to mean it does not include electronic communication. There's a good reason why. Across the world, newspapers, we, can, we say the joke that every citizen and his dog can set up a newspaper. <laughs> because it only depends on whether you can get the paper to print or not. When it comes to broadcasting, the spectrum is very limited. It's not every one of us, even if you had the means, who can run a broadcasting station. So for each frequency that we, get, we give, we deprive so many of us the opportunity to broadcast. And that is why everywhere in the world, greater obligation is placed on broadcasting than on newspapers. That is standard practice all over the world. That is one. The second thing is that something begins this analysis by pointing out what, in his opinion, constituted ambiguity and why the law was not clear and why the, 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 the law is problematic because it lacks clarity. You cannot in that same breath be running away from letter of the law and confusing uh, 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 the issues with some spirit that certainly is an unruly horse that we cannot define. If something agrees that the letter of the law is clear and it relates to newspapers, it seems to me that unless he's able to point to something in the law that leads to him to the conclusion of the spirit of the law. The basic rule of interpretation is that the document must be interpreted in the plain, ordinary meaning of the words used. You understand? It is only when that leads to absurdity that so you I, run I say, into other so, forms so of... So I say that the, the Constitution does not uh, talk prohibit. about... No, you know, it, it, doesn't, okay. it doesn't make any laws for radio and TV. The Constitution does not say See, that the Commission uh, cannot make regulations on... So is that not the spirit then that no, yes, something is talking well, about? Well, because we can go to the how, how, does, how does George connect what we are discussing and the point he makes to Article, one, article 162 clause, clauses 2 and 4? Clause 2 says there should not be, there shall not be censorship, right? Now, Nana, I'll point out clear aspects of this LI mm -hmm. that will leave you in no doubt that, that is there is censorship. Okay, I'm going to take now, a break here. Now, <laughs> now the clause four mm -hmm. says that as an editor, mm -hmm. your editorial opinion, your views, 
and the contents of publication so are not suppo to supposed to be subject to control or interference by government. What are they seeking by to do? Are they government. not seeking okay. to control no, and not interfere? Shall they no. be penalized? And you are not supposed to be penalized. For the editorial opinions no, no, here we are, and views. Here we are. Content content of the if you flout the, the the regulations, you can suffer at at a lesser uh, at a at a lesser point. You can suffer about um, uh, thirty six thousand Ghana cities fine, or uh, three two hundred and forty thousand Ghana cities fine. Or at a higher point, you can suffer 60,000 Ghana CDs fine or 600,000 uh, CDs, uh, uh, CDs fine. Or you could additionally, you could additionally get two years imprisonment or five years in jail. If this is not criminal libel, what is it? I'm going to take a break here. When I come back, George will extend it. Uh, but I have so many comments here. I'll just read one before I go. This is from... Kwekubi Abrantia of Aguna Nyako. He says, uh, are we not the NMC is coming after the law because of the power struggle between the NMC and the NCA? They should be settling their differences and not extend it to the citizenry. There are more comments. Keep coming in and I'll catch up. Don't move. <laughs> Please, uh, can I broadcast? <laughs> That's what we're talking about today. Uh, if it comes into law, quite literally, you need to, you know, fill out a form and... Uh, it is law, Nana. Uh, it, it is law. So. But let me quickly explain, Nana, that we shared jokes about it, but actually that is not what the law requires. The, in broadcasting, there, is, there are rules, as I have indicated, everywhere in the world. There are certain kinds of content that you can't carry during certain times. For example, material of adult nature. In some countries, they call a period the watershed. Different countries have different uh, uh, phraseologies. So when you do a content... But you said yours at 9 o'clock. Is it not too early? It's, 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 a, it's a real debate. I, at a personal level, I thought that it should be a little higher, and this is one of the re this is one of the concessions that were made in the consultation process. I'm extremely sorry for this. This is one of the concessions that were made in the consultation processes. So sometimes when you hear comments that appear to suggest that there was no consultation, it is because personally, I will push it higher, except that. The broadcasters argued very strongly about parental responsibility. Well, parents should take care. It's not my argument, you understand? Because they think that if you kept the watershed up, then you limited the period for adult content, and therefore they wanted wider expanse. Personally, that would not be what I would recommend. But the point that I want to clarify is that everywhere in the world, programs guide is a matter of course, so much so that for pay TV uh, uh, channel distributors, even in countries where they, they are not required to publish their program's guide, they still publish it. Because in most countries, it's a requirement of law. And in any case, they also find it commercially viable as a way of advertising their programs. So all that a program's guide does is to give a general indication of the nature of the of the station. Because that is what enables you to distinguish between a commercial broadcaster, a community broadcaster, and a public service broadcaster. You understand? So it's, it's a pure administrative thing that should not worry anybody at all. In any case, Nana, think about the practical reality. How many people would the commission need to employ to go through programs or actual content on daily basis before it is broadcast. That is one. Practically, it's impossible. And two, as Samson points out, censorship or any prior restraint is prohibited by the Constitution. So the Commission is not seeking to censor any material at all. Yeah, but it says that if you're not happy, you would tell no. me. No. So the, what the law says is that if you pro provide your program's guide 
or content profile and the commission finds it unsatisfactory, the commission should point it out to you so that you revise. So in other words, Nana, we are going to broadcast. We have a programs guide that shows around 2 p.m. material that suggests adult content. When the watershed is 9 p.m., the commission will advise you that this kind of content will be problematic for a 2 p.m. program. And as a result, please revise upwards. That is all that this law is talking about. I, I, I have the form here, Pro, mm -hmm. uh, Program Guide for Content Authorization. And in the first box says Program Description. Now, yes. I'm, using, I'm using my program. So Program Description, what, what is it? Uh, on the radio? Current that's, Affairs. That's, no, no, not this one. My radio program. So that would be what, like a talk show? Or I don't it, know. It's still current affairs. Current affairs. That's all that you need to indicate. So the program will be, that's my opinion. But, you know, I, I Chris Chum will be in a big trouble because... It what, what, won't what, be. It's but the guy is talking about his opinions. I mean, so no, how do you... No, it's, it, your, no, no, your opinions are on the current issues that you consider interesting, important, relevant, pertinent. So it's still current affairs. That's all that you need to do. If it is sports, you indicate that it is sports. In countries where they have effective monitoring systems, mm -hmm. because monitoring is also expensive, you're using technology, it helps you also to decide where are the critical areas that I need to monitor. Sports is less likely, maybe sports is less likely to generate controversy, and so I don't need to in in invest too much money for a football match, or s things like that. Or if there is a program that is targeting children, I want to watch that program closely to see if there is any attempt to manipulate children there or they are carrying any content that is not suitable for children. That is all that is required okay, of me, you. Let me, let, me read, let me catch up with a couple of comments and then I'll raise some concerns here and then I'll something uh, will come in. Uh, this is superb. This is a superb move by the NMC. Kudos to uh, this regulation lets strictly monitor those electronic and print media houses to adequately check their content meticulously before they put it out there in the public domain. Mm -hmm. Godfred Atudonko, uh, <laughs> former <laughs> assemblyman in Salt Pond. Uh, <laughs> this was, Godfred, that's no one <laughs> this was a, please allow me to contribute to your program. Some time ago, the equivalent to the media commission in Ghana, uh, a fine, fine a TV network here in the USA over $200 million for allowing the public to see Janet Jackson's expose yeah. herself on a half, on a super, half super time show, yeah, a Super Bowl uh, match. Uh, if we want to put Ghana on the right path, there are regulations that need to be planted. Now, now seriously, I love Samson. The man has brain. Samson is making things clear here from mm -hmm. Ali Mohammed Hafiz in Boko. Mm -hmm. Ali, you're welcome. Uh, we'll speak our mind if we think the country is heading towards a ditch. If we don't think they are blocking our ideas because of their uh, in incompetent then they should super glue uh, close the mouth of the whole 25 million population this is justice <laughs> hello i'm a blogger at uh, foxvibe.com and i want to ask does this new law also apply to bloggers or who blog about entertainment sports and life lifestyle or it applies only to national issues I think the idea to authorize broadcasting, broadcast content is a laudable idea and the great wisdom of our time. Common sense should be exchanged for freedom of speech. Please kindly greet my mentor something and tell him I want his contact number. I admire him so much. Haruna from Tamale. Okay. Don't we all admire? We all love something. <laughs> so if you would give me just a second mm -hmm. to re-emphasize a point. The law will not change anything in the broadcasting sphere as we have it. Mm -hmm. As I have explained, it is not targeted at journalists, it is not for presenters, it is not for any sad person. For the so every one of us is still going to be able to speak as freely as we speak and perhaps even more. We should be as critical and as robust as we can. All that the law is saying is that for anybody who sets up a broadcasting network, you must submit yourself to minimum standards of public accountability. Uh, Samson, uh, uh, there's another one here that says, operators must not broadcast before watershed period uh, demonstrations of exorcism, uh, occult practice, and the paranormal which port, uh, purport to be real. 
uh, paranormal practices which are for entertainment purpose must not be broadcast when significant numbers of children may be expected to be watching or are particularly likely to be listening. Uh, this does not apply to drama, film or comedy. And I, <clears throat> you see, we, we have advertisements of local herbs that cure every disease. Mm. But you know, by law, <laughs> some of those advertisements are clearly wrong. Yeah. There are regulators who are supposed to approve some of these before they get onto radio or TV. If they are not approved and you go ahead and you deal with them in your medium, you are infringing the law. You'll be punished for it. When is it, uh, is it Wiser or what is his name? Yeah. Or, Something. yes, when he showed his thing on stage. <laughs> He's in court, is he not? Yeah. When um, Chris Brown came to Ghana, and allegedly, the you know, smoked something on, <laughs> on, on stage. What did the police say? The police said they would go after him because he had infringed the laws of this country. What I'm saying, Nana, is that read the law closely and the NMC may have the best of intentions. But I state again that I don't find the provisions of the law to pass the constitutional master. C, in regulation, regulation 10, for example, regulation 10, sub-regulation 1C, says if the commission may suspend or revoke a content authorization where the commission determines that an operator, come to C, has acted in a manner that is inconsistent with the standard guidelines or directives of the commission. What it means is that, once again, the commission is a lawmaker, like I have said, and is the enforcer, is the police. In fact, they are going to be doing some monitoring and they'll be doing some investigations to ensure that you are compliant. So when Mr. Sapon says, you know, irrespective of the contents and guidelines that are approved, you are at liberty to remain to function as we do now. I have my doubts because they would monitor you and would find that you may have done something that runs counter or contrary to what you have submitted in your authorization application. And on the basis of that, they have the rights by this ally to revoke the authorization they've given you. Now, another curious thing, after they have revoked it, you have a right to appeal to them to review it. You give them reasons why you should not be subject to the sanctions they are giving you. Do you know what? They who have constituted themselves onto the enforcers of the law and the judges or the courts who have made a determination that you have aired are the same persons that will consider your review. Nana, in basic jurisprudence, it doesn't happen. In basic jurisprudence, what should happen is this. If there ought to be an appeal, I must appeal to someone else. Set up a body, an appellate body. Say maybe a member of the commission, a member of the GJA, a member of GBA brought together will constitute an appellate body to whom an appeal shall be sent. But I will send the appeal to you, Nana, who has made the determination that I am wrong and expect you to review it favorably in my favor. Again, once they give you the notice that you are erring or that you are not following their directives they say it clearly you are not following their directives they give you the notice about seven days notice that you can take to remedy the situation within that period when you have gone ahead and even remedied this the the breach alleged you will still are liable to pay a fine of about 
34,000, 36,000, or 240,000 Ghana cities. Why? But, uh, judge, all, judge and jury. <laughs> first of all, in, in regulations, and uh, not only in media, but whether you took the Bank of Ghana, the Food and Drugs Authority, the National Communications Authority, the Medical and Dental Council, in every kind of regulation, there is a principle we call unity of command, which means that the regulator must have enough authority to do its work. And that is precisely why at the Bank of Ghana, for example, if they found that any bank is flouting any of the financial uh, 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 rules that they set, the bank is empowered to act in the protection of the economy, in the protection of individuals, in the protection of uh, uh, businesses and investors. It is the same thing. But has if the, the bank got an independent body that I can write to to say, listen, uh, Bank of Ghana say I'm doing this and I don't think I'm doing that. I'm coming back to okay. it. Now, Samson knows this too well. In law, the basic jurisprudence is that you can never oust the authority of the court. Okay. The second point is that every quasi uh, a, a, a judicial educating body is subject to the authority of the High Court. Under this law, the law is very clear that where any applicant, anybody feels dissatisfied by a decision of the Commission, under 11.4b, if the applicant is dissatisfied with the decision of the commission in relation to the review, the applicant may pursue the matter in court. So the commission does not have the finality that the analysis appears to attribute to the commission. So this is very consistent with the basic jurisprudence of no, but fairness that something myself to the review. Yes, yeah, the appeal yeah. for but, review. But, but the, the I think you have a point there, except yes. that I want you to add that the f finality still rests with the court. So the, the appellate process or the review process is only a midstream issue because ultimately the decision oh, still no, rests. not fair. You have condemned me and yeah. I come back to you yeah. and say reconsider my situation. I cannot trust but that you be fair. It's a basic principle of the rules of natural justice. You ought not be a judge in your own course. Actually, I, I do not think that that is what is here. But I, I just wanted to share a joke with something. <laughs> that, I mean, I, in our practice as lawyers, if the Supreme Court gives a decision and you don't want it, you, you must go back there. Oh, but no, you you, when you go back there, the panel It's only a joke. It's only it a changes. joke. So that is precisely, that's precisely <laughs> the point that I'm making. Mm. I think what is significant here, Samson, I, I do not dispute your nervousness about that process. But for me, and I think that uh, most people involved in regulation would agree that once the law does not seek to house the jurisdiction of the court, and in any case it couldn't, and the individual still has the right which can be vindicated in court, it appears to me that uh, our nervousness or regard to that procedure can go down because ultimately, the biggest protector of our liberties, the court, still has a right to look into any matter that the commission sits on. Sometimes by the time the court has taken over this issue and determined it, a lot has gone under the, 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 the bridge. Uh, you know, you, you could suffer a lot of damage as, as a media institution that you've been, you are unable to continue your operations and you are now supposed to go to court to, to, to vindicate, assert your right and be given the, the opportunity to come back and start. If you break after a while, coming back will be such a huge loss. So, so you I mean, you may, not, you may never recover. I'm going to take a break and then I'll come back. to avoid that kind of loss. <laughs> it's just to do things right. I'm going, to take, you don't have all this. I, I'm going to take a break and come back. And when I come back, I want us to find out that for every 12 months, you need to take your content back for review. And after, after three years, what happens? Let, let's take a break and come because it's going to be quite tedious for something particularly. Every year, as we say, look, I'm still... For, for the guidelines and the general content yeah. is for, it's for three, three years. years. Yeah. We'll take a break and we'll come back.
Please, sir, may I broadcast? <laughs> Nana, uh, you may have to change this intro. <laughs> it's, it's crisp. I, I love it. Yeah, it's, it's straight to the point. <laughs> now, you, you were explaining about the three year and, 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 uh, and yeah. the 12 year to me. 12 yeah. months. The, 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 it's, it's a very simple process. So for the 12 months is? That's the program's guide. Pro program's guide. So let us say that you had a program's guide that you used for last year or that you filed with the commission. As you go into uh, 2016, this is an election year, so you want to reduce, for example, your entertainment in order to do more election, uh, election programming. You only indicate to the regulator that we've reduced our entertainment programming by one hour and increase our election coverage by one hour. That is all. Okay. Or that for this period, we are suspending some of our sports programming in order to increase our elections coverage. That is all that mm -hmm. is required. For the three-year authorization, it is just to give room. And please always keep in mind the basic point that we make, that the spectrum is still a limited public resource. So if you have it, and I don't have it, and he doesn't have it, Keep it in mind constantly that Samson, given the chance, may want to have it. So the promise that you make, that you are going to use the spectrum to serve society, at the end of the three years, we will judge you by your own promise. So that if you did not live by your own promise, then some decision could be taken. Hey, so after three years, you go and tell them, no, in fact, in we're, fact, we're not going to renew it for you. World, Everywhere in the world, that is exactly what happens. In some countries, they actually conduct public hearings in the communities to ask about how well has this radio station served this community. If the community comes to the conclusion that the station has not been helpful, the station may well change hands in terms of the frequency. But that, those are not the issues that we want for him. I want you to keep in mind that Something made a point earlier about the fact that really, if you look very critically at most of the provisions, they don't change the order of things much because embedded within the general sphere of the society are most of these rules already. Maybe what order it does is to codify them to make it easier to access. Most of the principles in here are already things that most responsible broadcasters live with. George, I've been, I find, I, I, I've been fine up until just this uh, three-year renewal course. Yes. I've been absolutely I must happy. Be you see, honest it, over that. I, I've been, I've been completely yes. fine, fine, fine. You know, because now you see, it seems as if we have all these rules, but we haven't enforced it. Yeah. All these magicians are on air yeah. performing yeah. magic, charming money. Yeah. You know, uh, last week I was talking about a child being abused that it was a witch being telecast. We didn't catch this, you know, arrest this priest. They are free to go. And then all of a sudden there's a three year clause to say, you know, come back after three years. What if they say, well, I'm not going to do it? And no. you know how polarized we are in this country. No, no, this you is know how polarized sorry we are in this sorry country. Sorry to intervene that quickly. The we go back to some of the points that Samson made about warnings and drawing our attention repeatedly and all. Oh, I'm talking about it, the three-year renewal. Yeah, that is exactly the point I'm mm. making, that the three-year cannot be spread upon anybody. And the, 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 one of the important things about this constitution is that it places obligations on anybody who has any authority to exercise a discretion, to exercise that discretion well. Something. So the commission is not a law unto itself. And therefore, the commission cannot arbitrarily decide that we gave you authorization, the three years has come, and without any basis, we are not renewing the authorization or we've oh, revoked something. it. I, I, mean, I would give you basis well, because- the law says actually that it imposes an obligation on them to give you reasons. reasons. Yes, the reason Detailed is that I have, I have a hundred thousand. I have a hundred thousand <laughs> signatures here who say that you are not helpful. Oh, it can't. And be. you can easily get it. No, it can't be. No. Oh, they are. They, we are so polarized. The that, potential of that mischief. You no, know, yeah, we are so polarized that there. you know there are particular stations right. who, you know, champion a particular uh, mm -hmm. ideology, mm -hmm. and therefore you just find signatures from people from the opposite ideology no. to say, look, no, these no, people no. have signed to say you let's, are. Let's, let's, let's clarify this that. 
the this law does not indicate that even if the whole of the 25 million Ghanaians petitioned against your station, it should be your renewal should be withdrawn. That's not what this law is saying. You understand? But the law the only. Law? This is the only part that perhaps some something cynical view about the monetary considerations. <laughs> I mean, would not be dismissed no, everywhere, everywhere entirely because <laughs> for a regulator, when you are going to submit your for, for your content, your content and everything, they are taking money. When uh, they are drawing your attention, taking, they are taking money. When it? it's only once. at every point, <laughs> it's only once. So. The the you know amongst lawyers the joke is that the bar must prosper, <laughs> the regulator must survive. So mm. if after three years you mm. are given a public spectrum to operate, and uh, yeah, you come it, for quickly does it cover? Yeah, like you go internet for renewal. Broadcast. It's another opportunity to make money and all of those yes. things. You know, it covers internet yes. broker. Yes. yes. So what if I'm set up in Togo? That is the point. If you are set up in Togo. You have no problem with Ghana. You will become of interest only if you are broadcasting into Ghana and you are persistently carrying harmful material. Then the service provider on which your material is carried would be required to warn you and if persistently you don't indicate, the service provider may be advised to take you down if they judge that that content is dangerous and harmful. Again, it is not the commission that is going to do that. It is that we advise to say, this is what we have seen. There is general consensus that this is problematic and therefore do something about it. That is all that this law requires. Well, counsel. No, no, I, I I say that as far as I can see by my reading of this law, it will not pass the constitutional master. I think that the National Media Commission perhaps meant well, but in couching and deciding what to capture, they have been too broad. You think they should enforce the they laws that are there They have been too broad and have, have overreached their powers. I think they have exceeded their powers uh, a lot. And the Giba, I understand they say they are going to court, like my friend says, mm -hmm. that's the best way. And my reading of the, of the mind of the Supreme Court from the cases they have dealt with for some time now about the media and the freedoms of the press, I have no doubt that they are likely to suffer an embarrassment in court. Even though they mean well. The spirit of things. I mean, we've been talking about the spirit of things. And I mean, I've read something here which, I mean, in my spirit, I think they should have started yesterday. You know, these uh, showing paranormal things and exorcism and uh, quickly. Now, if, an if, example if, if, of a child being abused. Yeah. It's clearly, you know, illegal. It's clearly unlawful, yeah. criminal. If, if, if an and alcohol company sponsored mm. it, can I, can I leave the bottle there and then do my show? If it is, if, if it is, uh, um, nine to ten. Nine I mean. to ten in most countries, depending on the country, you may or you may not. No, I'm the, talking about the, in your laws. And this, this, law, law, this law does not. In that regard, okay. This law does not prescribe directly mm -hmm. on matters like that mm -hmm. and leaves the operator a lot of room mm -hmm. to operate. But we still expect that even outside the law we would, all of us would not suspend common sense. Thank you very much. And uh, let's wait to see how this law gets interpreted finally. But thank you very much, Samson. Thank you, George. Uh, on Thursday on uh, Joy of them, uh, between 2 and 3 p.m., that's my opinion. Now, tomorrow I'm looking at, you know, all these taxes and all these price hikes. And bear in mind that I promise that 2016 is the year of the citizen, Article 41. You and I, we have a part to play. And if we won't pay our part, then shut up and pay. If you won't play your part as a responsible citizen, then shut up and pay. But it's going to be an interesting piece. Don't miss it. Guys, thank you very much. Can I assure something that this is fully constitutional <laughs> and we hope that the Supreme Court will affirm this. Thank you very much. You're welcome. <laughs>